Hello. It was just over a year ago that two brothers from Australia presented their idea for a BSV powered picture sharing app to the Bitcoin Association's Pitch Day. With a platform that treats everybody equally, where users can upload and share photos and videos they create every day. All content is stored and encrypted on the blockchain. Liking and commenting will result in monetized rewards. Our vision to enable anyone in the world with a phone to own and generate revenue from their photos and videos and to help grow the BSV ecosystem and bring Bitcoin to the mainstream. Jeremy and Daniel Street did so well in front of a room of potential investors that they were invited to appear at the CoinGeek conference in London. Back then, the app was just a proposal. Now it's open for business. This week, I want to find out how you turn an idea into reality. So I'd like to welcome Jeremy and Daniel to CoinGeek Conversations. Hi. Thanks, Charles. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. Well, a lot has happened since uh, London in February last year. When did, when did you actually launch the app? So we launched end of November, end of November, where we had a, a private beta. So people had to almost reach out to us first, uh, and then we manually onboarded them. And then it wasn't until uh, probably about four weeks ago, th- three, four weeks ago, that we, we opened it up. We're comfortable with you know, the feedback we'd received over the, the past you know, three, four months. Um, with you know bugs and you know, additional features that we wanted to implement, and then yeah, we entirely opened it up about three weeks ago. So Jeremy, what what was the hardest thing in that process of from February through to the launch in November? Honestly, I think I think the hardest part was before February, um, when we were trying to grapple with this new protocol that that wasn't particularly mature, okay? So coming from a software engineering background of the, you know, almost 15 years, there's a lot of stuff that just works out of the box, out of the box. And, and all, you know, my job is, all my colleagues' job is, is to design a, a solution that scales um, effectively. There's a lot of open source libraries and a rich, rich community that, that we've always been able to build upon. And we sort of begin, you know, knowing that we've got those libraries available and designing infrastructure and architecture that can scale. I think jumping into the BSV ecosystem and having libraries that were really just in, you know, prototype beta mode was the hardest part. So we we tried a few, trying to figure out what we could build, what we couldn't build. And I think based on the back of that, we realized, hang on a second, not everything needs to live on the blockchain. Let's, let's re- rethink here. Why is it that it's so hard to build software that I know how to build on this on this protocol? Is it because we're trying to do everything on the protocol? So we took a step back, came to came to February as, as we you know already sort of defined what the architecture of Relic was going to look like. And then since then, it's just been build, build, build. So, so Dan, I mean, I, I'm not a technical person, but am I right in thinking that there's sort of there's a part of what you've built that is would be common to any kind of uh, app online and then there's a part of it that is bsv specific and somehow those two bits have to integrate yeah correct correct so similar to you you know we can compare ourselves to to instagram where a majority of the photos are stored on their server base we also store the photos on the server base but we do store the the hash of uh individual photos on the blockchain one of the first things that we noticed was so the the price to upload images onto the blockchain at the moment because we're so early days it was you know anywhere from 10 cents to 17 cents and we're like wow that's a that's a massive blocker for any um on borders to to relica so we thought all right look let's let's just store a hash of the of the photo as proof of ownership on the blockchain and then the photo itself can be stored on on our server base. And then so the price of the photo being uploaded had gone from 10 to 17 cents, just down to one cents. Yeah, and um, talking of money, 
uh, at the pitch day, you were asking, you were trying to raise half a million pounds that you reckoned was going to last for 18 months. I mean, how did that go? And are you both either or either of you still have you got day jobs still? It's, yeah, it's an obscene amount of money to ask for in retrospect. Um, <laughs> we, we probably got rid of uh, one of our advisors after we asked for that. Um, <laughs> no, look, we, we didn't. We, we didn't need that much. OK, so um, I think realistically it was a little bit more more like 50, 50,000 pounds. Um, yeah. And did you get some of that? Uh, no, no we're, we're self, we're self, fun- sorry, Dan, you, you go. Yeah, no, we're, we're, so, we're self-funded at the moment, Charles. But hmm. um, no, the, the feedback we received from Pitch Day was they were, the investors were more looking to invest in the underlying, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jez, uh, the infrastructure projects on, on Bitcoin SV. So similar things to the, um, like Unrider, who's providing all these libraries, and a few others, a few of the other prominent wallets as well. Mm. Um, but initially, like obviously, you know, that half a million pounds would give us, you know, a huge runway and, and yeah, allow us to scale massively as well. Um, things have things have changed a little bit since since pitch day in the last twelve months. I think we've got a bit more focus as to where we want to be. Um, so our plan is to continue to develop, continue to sell fund for the time being, and then reach out to investors in probably the next two months, two to three months, because um, we've got some pretty exciting ideas uh, planned and what we're actually currently building at the moment for Relica. So are you still, either of you, working in other jobs? <laughs> it, it wasn't until about two two months ago that I was, so I'd been working in commercial real estate for, uh, about five years and I was juggling both jobs. You know, I had people that I was onboarding for Relica and that whole Bitcoin space. And then I had, you know, uh, other agents calling me and, and, um, you know, clients calling me in regards to commercial property. I'm like, wow, where, where do I want to be? Do I want to be saving the world and, you know, ensuring that Bitcoin <laughs> survives or, helping this person, you know, lease this property. So I, I, I kind of pulled the plug two months ago. So I'm full-time on Relica at the moment, which is exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, still still working. I've still got my day job. Um, and simply, I'm just able to balance it now. Probably wasn't able to balance it properly for the last 12 months, but somehow survived. Um, and are able to balance a bit more now that we've just got this sort of basic foundation of, of the app down. Well, now that, now that you've launched it, um, what what's the response been like? What's the take up been like? Uh, it, it's been it's been pretty positive so far. So we've got we've got about eight hundred users at the moment. Um, we've still got a lot of a, a lot of plans in our pipeline to ensure that you know we, we get we do get more users and to to keep these users on board as well. And look, we haven't even started our marketing campaign at the moment either um you know which involves you know onboarding a number of influencers as well and having them reach out to their followers um we almost kind of just wanted to refine the product first and then kind of start marketing uh relic full time uh to a number of these larger influencers i've started using it and i you know it works very very well i must say Mm. and it's kind of fun um when you get some feedback from people and you get people following. It sort of means more that somebody is following you because you know they've had to contribute a little bit of money to do that. So it does change the experience, definitely. I think it's 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 sort of it's so interesting because we've been talking about different incentive models. How do you how do you incentivize a world that doesn't have to pay for anything um, to 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 begin to pay for things as as small as those transactions actually are. Um, so to begin with, we, we got some feedback that, oh, you know, followers and, you know, this and that shouldn't shouldn't cost money. And we thought, oh, you know what, that, that probably makes sense. Let's let's not pay for followers. But what we realized pretty quickly is that if you're not paying for followers in this world that might be, you know, a, a little bit of a hybrid of things that you can pay for, things that you, that you don't pay for, you sort of, it loses its meaning a little bit. 
And so as, as you just mentioned, Charles, you know, the fact that you pay to follow somebody makes it a little bit more personalized than it's where, where, where you don't necessarily do that. But we're, we're constantly trying to tweak um, the economic incentives because it's just, it's a new world. It's a new, it's a new land of, of figuring this out. And so we're, we're also conscious of spending too much time tweaking those economics because the stuff that we've got planned that, that Dan mentioned, um, I mean, our pipeline is, is huge. Um, but the stuff that Relic is really about isn't so much this photo sharing app. I mean, it is. It's, it's what we're currently building and what we've always had um, in mind when we started the company, uh, which should hopefully be out in a proof of concept in, in a month or two. Oh, right. So you mean we won't be sort of always mentally thinking it's the BSV Instagram. It'll be, it'll be different from that. We're hoping to change the, uh, change the world with it. It's one of those things where, you know, you, you say, okay, yeah, Rally Care is the, the, um, you know, the BSV Instagram, but what we're planning for phase two isn't even on the existing internet itself. So it's, you know, Rally Care is the yeah, pretty much a revolution in, in any app that's ever been built. I think that, that sounds really good because I think, you know, to, you've got to come up with something that there is a problem, I think, with the, with the incentive model that you and, and other sort of BSV social media apps have. Because yeah. apart from the fact that whether in the end people will be happy to pay and be paid, just mm. getting them from where they are now to there is always going to be a problem, I think. And if you can come up with something completely different, that's surely got to be uh, a better idea. Absolutely. And and that was always our, our plan to, to try to lower the barrier to entry into this ecosystem as much as we possibly could. I, I, I don't like saying ecosystem, but just just this new way of thinking of the world and this, and this new protocol. Um, and I think what we've what we're building now um, I mean, it just doesn't exist. It's not gaming. Conscious of what I can and can't say, but it's 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 it's, it's, in, it's incredible. It doesn't exist. It doesn't but exist. Is it still going to be Relica? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not you're not building a second thing. It is Relica, just the new version. Yeah, it'll be in Relica yeah. with additional feature. Yeah, we had to we had to build Relica, I guess, to sort of get to where we wanted to get to. As in, like the current the current state of Relica, um, and that's been fun. And you know, we've managed to build Instagram on the blockchain. Woohoo! But I, I don't think anyone's going to make it in this space. Or, you know, it, most people are going to be overlooked in, unless they're original and they're creative. And what we what we're building, nobody's. I, I don't think anybody's conceived in the world. Hmm. No, well, I can't wait. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we, we can't wait. <laughs> but, but is this, I mean, okay, so just to, to sort of round this off, are you saying that the idea that you can have social media where there is payment, paying and being paid is just not necessarily a viable model? Oh, well, look, I think it's definitely a viable model. You look at um, yeah, Patreon uh, and, and websites like that where people are paying for other users' users' content. Um, so there is a model, but what we're planning is so far out of the box that it's 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 amazing. It, it blows my mind, you know, thinking about <laughs> it. If we, can, I mean, if we can execute it, which we think we we will, it's yeah, it's going to be pretty amazing. I mean, there's an interesting debate to be had about this, I think, because yeah, so Patreon um, is working, and people pay substantial amounts of money to access expertise uh, that they that they want to get. And I'm wondering whether really is the is the conclusion that you would draw from that that actually having paying very small amounts of money is not necessarily what people want, but they might be prepared to pay larger amounts of money for, for bigger things. And that micropayments I, I don't know, this is just my theory, that micropayments either need to be so small that you really just can't be bothered to think about it. Whereas mm. like eight cents or something is not in that category as far as I would would put it. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, $5, $10 for something that you really want, maybe maybe the model starts working again around that yeah. kind of level. 
Uh, exactly. 100%. This, these are a few ideas that we've thrown around as well, um, where users can have uh, their exclusive content, uh, which is you know almost locked in, in a, as a private profile. Um, but then they can set the price as to how much it costs to follow them. So similar to Patreon, but you know they can say, all right, you know I've got all this exclusive content that can teach you this, 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 this. Uh, it's it's five dollars to follow me. And instead of Patreon, where you you know you sign up via your credit card and all that, it's just literally one click of a button. You pay them the five dollars, ten dollars, or whatever whatever fee they set, and you've got access to all of their exclusive content. I can really see that working. I'm just thinking of um, somebody that I follow on, on Twitter because I live in West London. And this mm. woman posts every day about four or five pictures of the history of West London. And it's kind of like places that I know, but from 100 nice. years ago or something. And I just enjoy seeing that. And if I had to pay a little bit, just one off to, to access that kind of content that I wouldn't otherwise get, I can imagine that, yeah, I would do that probably. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And we're in such uh, an early space that the, these are, you know, conversations that Dan and I have had, just trying to work out what we what we target, what we prioritize, um, and how we how we just create new ideas that, that you know potentially people haven't even thought of before. Um, but these incentive models are, are right, and I think I think paying, sorry, uh, charging people. It's too much money to for a, for a basic interaction that we've all come to know and love, like a like or a comment, is is debatable and we, yeah. lengthy discussions about whether or not that's an incentive model that's going to exist in a few years or what. Have you read and are you interested in the sort of theory of startups and entrepreneurships and stuff and and all the the kind of difficult things that happen along the way and how people sort of advise you to respond to things that go wrong and all that kind of stuff? Or are you just, do you just do what you do and not worry uh, about the theory? We've sort of been lucky in the sense that my best friend um, has, has worked in and with startup companies for, for about 10 years now over in, over in London. He works for one of the biggest VCs now um, in, in Europe. And so he's he's been key to to a lot of the questions that we've had, a lot of a lot of the things that we need to to think about. Um, but really importantly, just just lowering, being conscious of lowering the barrier to entry to the BSV uh, protocol as much as possible, because the rest of the world doesn't care. And so and so keeping that in our vision is is something we've been trying to do as much as we can along the way. Because at the moment. When you go to Relica, it tells you you've got to sign up for, well, at the moment, money button, but I think you're introducing hand cash as well. Yeah, yeah. So we found that a, a lot of users were, were signing up to, to Relica via you know, hand cash. Oh, well, hand cash is coming shortly, actually, but via money button. And then as soon as they, they go to post a photo, uh, they realize, oh, hang on, you actually have to pay for it. I got a number of messages on um, on Twitter, you know, saying, "Oh, what do we have to pay for pay for photos?" Okay, this is interesting. I think we lost a few users because of that. What we're going to do though is integrate a new system, and it's, it's very unique to to BSV apps. You know, allowing users to post their first photo for free, um, but then also having a, an almost achievement system within Relica, so they can earn. Uh, money through sharing with their socials so maybe they you know post a photo or post their uh, invite link to twitter and they earn one cents two cents for that or they right. know, follow us on twitter and they earn one cent so all of a sudden you've got these achievements which you can unlock within relica and then from that you can earn five cents or ten cents and that can go towards interacting within the app or uploading a number of your photos could i summarize that as you're trying to tip the balance towards making it easier to earn money and harder to spend it. Kind of 100%, 100%. Because as a, as a newcomer, you know, what, what do you do? Do you, do you then have to go onto an exchange and, and purchase uh, uh, Bitcoin or, you know, obviously, well, you could look, you can do it through money button as well. Um, but then you've got the, the whole KYC as well, which some people are like, oh, you know, I'm not sure about that. Uh, 
yeah, we, we feel like this will just drop the, the barrier to entry. I've seen you referring to non-fungible tokens coming up sometime. Um, mm. What are they? Mm. I don't know. I don't even know what they are, really, I'm afraid. So it's the ability to almost create a digital asset that lives permanently on the blockchain. Um, I'm not sure recently Twitch had the, the first non-fungible token release uh, where it's just a, a card and, you know, technically you, know, you can purchase the card and then that uh, is owned by yourself in your wallet. So it's a digital, it's a digital asset. Um, right. So we're speaking with um, Elas, Elas Digital at the moment. Mm. Uh, this is Brent, Brendan Lee's Brendan company. Lee, yeah. 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 So we're we're having a chat with him in regards to that, and that's another you know, another kind of avenue that we're looking to pursue as well, um, which which almost kind of integrates with this this additional phase um, phase two of Relica. Then, then you've sort of introduced a second currency, or almost haven't you, into the whole system? Is that? What, no, what not, not particularly. Almost non-fungible tokens. So you, you can almost tokenize your your images um, within Relica. Anything. They don't they don't need to be Relica related. They can they don't need to be picture related. They could be they can be anything that w- that somebody decides that they would like to to put on the blockchain and then and then capitalize on later. But then, what can I do with my token? So. Um, so a token might take the form of different things. The token might take a form of something that you can take to a store and say, hey, look, um, I've got this token. Um, can I can I use this as a currency at, at your store? Um, not to talk too much about uh, that, <laughs> right. but um, on a very sort of abstract level, you'll be able to do things like that. Right, and this is not going to be a token that's you know a random token that doesn't exist yet, like you know BSB X or whatever. These these tokens will represent things that that already exist in in the world today. Oh, I see. You can tokenize an actual thing that exists. You can tokenize anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a, there's a number of apps at the moment on Ethereum, and look, I think they'll eventually port themselves over to, to BSV to me to be honest, because of the the gas fees and all that. But they are tokenizing, um, you know, digital art and pictures and all of that. And then from there, they've got a marketplace where they're selling them. And you can kind of start to see this come about uh, with, with what what Twitch are doing as well. And, yeah, it, it's it's all ideas that we're throwing around. So, yeah, we're, we're meeting with Brendan in about a week or so to discuss just, just different ideas and concepts that we were thinking about as well. Yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned – well, I, there are two things, two very – basic things that we haven't mentioned um mm. even though we're drawing to a close here one is that you changed the name from memento to relica uh, <laughs> which uh is a more unusual name definitely just give me a, a quick of sentence on that decision dan it, it, it was almost it was almost uh it came down to to trademarks to be honest we, we spoke to our solicitors and we said look we're rolling with the name memento yeah we've got this website and they said to us, look, there's 500 other businesses that have also trademarked the name Memento. You may run into issues down the track. <laughs> so Jeremy and I went back to the drawing board, which was frustrating at first because it took us you know, a month and a half to come up with the name Memento. Um, and then it kind of literally within a day or two, Jeremy's like, oh, hang on. What about Relico or Relica? And I'm like, oh, Relica. OK, yeah, no, I like it. So yeah, it's pretty amazing how it came about, and then we we searched um, searched online to see who else had that, and I think there's a, a one other trademark with Relica, some uh, company in France that was selling artwork. I'm like, yeah, done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good it's a good name because it's simple, but it's also unusual. And yeah, not, I love it. You're not going to have trouble spelling it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and it and it. Um, it uh, is similar to Memento in ways that we sort of were sort of aiming for to begin with. Well, one thing I one thing I came across recently is that in the 19th century, tourists uh, called souvenirs relics. They would mm. co- come back from you know Westminster Abbey or something with um, a, 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 
of something which they would call a relic. It might, wouldn't necessarily be a piece of it, but it, that's what souvenirs were called. So that's what it brings to my mind. <laughs> and and, and, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that that's exactly what it evokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, the it, other it thing... It didn't mean something, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> the, the other thing we haven't mentioned is that Dan is in Australia and Jeremy and I are in London, but... So, which is not a problem for this, but how is that? Um, how is that re- sort of difficult? Difficult uh, time difference been affecting don't, you? Don't over ask. The- don't ask. It's particularly hard with daylight savings as well. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's one of those things where you know Jeremy might be messaging me at say 12, 12 p.m. My, my time, and I look at the time in London. It's one a.m. I'm like, oh wow, he's uh, <laughs> He's up late working, but um, look, we, we make it work. We make it work. We try to do our daily calls at, say, like 8 a.m. my time, which is 9 p.m. Jeremy's time. But it, it, it's, a, it's a juggle for the time being. Well, um, it's very good of Jeremy to be doing this uh, after our dinner time here in London. It's very good, Dan, for you to be doing it before you've even had your breakfast. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Well, yeah, thank you, shots. thank you both so much for talking to me, and um, really, really good luck with Renica. And I hope that in another year's time, um, when the, the the big reveal has happened about the next step, we can uh, catch up again, if not before then. Absolutely. Hundred percent. Looking forward to it, Charles. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Charles. Yes. Bye now. Thanks very much to Jeremy and Dan Street. And if you haven't tried Relica, please do. Thanks very much for listening to this episode of CoinGeek Conversations. And please join me, Charles Miller, for another one next week. Until then, from me, goodbye. Hi, it's Jimmy Wynn, founding president of Bitcoin Association. I'm excited to announce that the next CoinGeek conference will be held in Zurich, Switzerland. Join us when CoinGeek will again broadcast live to the world, bringing you exciting new developments in the Bitcoin SV ecosystem. Registration is open now and stay tuned for more details about CoinGeek Zurich.